And you know what's remarkable, David? Crude oil is up 3%, and energy stocks cannot rally at all. They're essentially flat. It's been a terrible week for energy. They're still down 1%. Or so let's just take a look here. The semis uh, week here, some of the China-related names, uh, Micron, Qualcomm, AMD on the weak side. Banks, yields down, banks a little bit. Here's flat energy, essentially. Remember, we're up 3% with crude today, as David mentioned here. Uh, utilities on the flat side, that's been, of course, a winner we've been talking about. The defensive names doing a little bit better. Just want to point out what's going down in Europe. Most of Europe's down 1, 2 percent. Italy's notably weak here. That's the Italian market down 2 percent. It looks like the Italian government may be on the verge of collapse. The Northern League threatening to pull out of the coalition there. These are the Italian banks that we often put up. Uh, and you can see they're down 5, 6 or 7 percent. Overall, I guess the question is, what's moving the markets right now? And, of course, other than trying to get the dollar weaker potentially and to get the Fed to move here, What's going to happen with the tariffs on September 1st? A lot of chatter and a lot of people on either side of this. I think the question is, is, is how likely is we're going to actually have the tariffs? I personally think the chances are pretty good that they may not happen because I think the bar for a second truce is fairly low, if you think about it. It's not a big hurdle to just declare a second truce and keep things going and the negotiations going. And is there a big constituency for more tariffs? I don't think so, other than Mr. Navarro and possibly the president himself, who's obviously the person who matters here. So I'm a little more bullish uh, on the potential that there might be some push out for the tariffs uh, on September 1st. Elsewhere, a lot of comments about how bearish everybody is, about the sentiment being awful. And it's true. If you look at this, uh, consumer sentiment, investor sentiment, the AAII, this is the weekly poll here, bearishness 48.2. Yikes. That's the highest since December. That's a pretty big number here. Historically, that's about 30 percent, somewhere around there. Bullishness uh, is down to 21 percent. You know, historically, that's much, much higher. So this spread here is abnormally wide. Now, of course, in the topsy-turvy world of sentiment, when sentiment's really bad, that's bullish for the market. Remember, these are contrarian indicators. Drives everybody crazy, uh, but they are. Uh, but maybe there's pretty good reason for people to be a little bit bearish in the short term. One of the things that everybody's talking about, and, and, and now the question is whether sentiment is washed out sufficiently, there's been a lot of outflows from mutual funds this week and ETFs. And a lot of people are saying, aha, you see, investors are pulling out money like crazy. Uh, calm down. That's not really what's going on. It's true. Big pullouts here, equity funds, ETFs, and mutual funds. These are combined $25 billion. That's the largest amount of outflows since December. It's still only about 0.3% of the assets, but it's still, that's a notable number here. And money market funds have seen inflows. So you might say, oh, okay, obviously, investors this week were freaked out. This is the last five trading days, and they're pulling money out. Most of these declines here are in the area of uh, ETFs, and these are dealers. So bear in mind, it's not really individual investors that are pulling money out. Finally, you want to talk about stuff at new high? How about the stock exchanges? CME, Intercontinental, and uh, CBOE, all at new highs. They're benefiting from a little bit of a market turmoil. Guys, back to you.